All right, Jason Rona back here. We're in Louisiana, West Monroe, Louisiana here uh, this week for another um, race time entertainment event. Now this is another Dave Lycom style uh, race time event here. This is the Southern National, which has been going on about 10 years now. Uh, recently, Dave took over this uh, particular event. Uh, this is something that was started without him uh, specifically, but uh, recently he kind of got involved with uh, taking over this event. And uh, we love coming to this facility. Uh, talked about it a, a bunch of times uh, with a lot of other racers, but we came here at the very first uh, inaugural type event, and uh, we've been coming here ever since. Uh, we love coming to this Ike Hamilton uh, Convention Center. Big space inside. You'll see this is one of the biggest places we'll run at. Uh, tons of elevation, probably the most elevated track we'll run at all year. And uh, coming from the pits, uh, everyone's loving this facility so far. They're loving the track layout. They think this is one of the best layouts uh, they've driven all year. So uh, stay tuned. Thanks for joining us. Uh, obviously, we talk about it all the time. These are uh, kind of long videos. They take a, a while to put together, uh, but it's fun doing it. It's good checking in with our drivers and see how things are going. And uh, we just like that uh, everybody uh, likes watching these and uh, gives us great comments. So like and subscribe. Of course, that helps here on these videos. And uh, share them. There's no reason why you can't share these videos and get them out there for more people. And uh, we try to just uh, explore and show how great RC racing is. And as uh, another travel event. So uh, take care, and uh, we'll see you next time. yesterday and we got a little bit of running in so far what are you looking what are you seeing out of Spencer so far in the practice and he's running three classes what's up how's he looking so far Spencer's looking really good I mean he's pretty focused he really wants to uh, wants to do really well at this race he's been working really hard getting his cars all tuned up working on the tire program and uh, he seems to be very confident that his tires his are really good, his cars are feeling great, and uh, he just wants to go out and have a good time. I've been uh, helping the team out, standing in line with their radio so they can get their cars prepped and ready to go, and anything that I can do to help out the team, I'm willing to do for all the guys here. the Southern Nationals. Uh, kind of a nice thing. We got some seating going on today and uh, get you guys on the track, get you timed and uh, put you where you belong. And uh, so far you're belonging up top. 
Uh, great run for you. Thanks. Uh, got the three laps together with the Truggy, and uh, you're flying. Talk to us about the key to that uh, that seating run. Yeah, so um, the T3.2 has actually been working pretty good. This is my first race on it. Um, so it was, in practice, it was, you know, Truggy, like, I know it's a little bit more grip with the new truck, and I was kind of psyched about it. Put in some more steering, the rear spring change. Talking to Curry and little buddy, and uh, it was awesome. I definitely didn't intend on top seating. I was just kind of out there, you know, doing my thing, and I came across and they yelled my name. So it must have been a fast lap. So but it was fun. The track was great. Yeah, I mean that's what everybody races for. Getting that moment where you can show that you got some speed, and then uh, we get into qualifying. You got to use a little more consistency and uh, drive uh, a little bit differently. But in Truggy. Guys tend to be able to drive that way for quite a while, but what are you expecting for the qualifiers? Just drive the same way. I know at the end I kind of got into it with a couple of guys, so I think just being there at the end and making sure I'm clear and not going to fly off the track. So just be smooth and let it all, out, let it all hang out. Uh, we're into seating here in Truggy. Uh, you got going pretty good on the track, uh, kind of feeling your way through this thing. Uh, now we caught you here in the pits, uh, doing some uh, kind of cool stuff with the foams. Explain to us a little tech tip here. Give us a tech tip on these foams. Yeah, so the tech tip about the foams is sometimes, depending on the track services, when you need a little bit of, some, little bit of extra grip or just speed, uh, this cutting the foams, like a V-cut is what we call it, using some scissors, cutting it, makes the tire a little bit flatter. But so it's mainly the, the profile right here that we look at, and then it also just makes it a little bit initially of some uh, cushion, a little bit softer just to kind of let the foam kind of do some of its own thing inside the tire once it expands. Um, it helps a little bit of some grip and some uh, comfortability out there. So I actually haven't tried it here yet. This is the first time I'm going to try it, but typically that's what it does, and that's kind of the, the little secret that we do at, all, at times. So show us one of these things. Um, show us the finished one. Yeah, so this is what it looks like finished. And it's pretty simple. You basically squeeze the foam, and yeah, you what just I, do I, a standard I, cut with the scissors. I just like flip it like that, yep. and then bop, bop. Yep. It's kind of interesting how you can flex the foam and then you, you get that V cut. Um, yeah, and it's actually a very unique thing. Uh, we've been doing this here and there for several years, but sometimes we'll do it in 10 scale, sometimes we'll do it in 8 scale. And uh, now we're not, we're not going to leave until we get a, a second tip, tech tip here. So yeah. This is, we call this double glue, right? This is called a double glue. This is something that I've started doing since the beginning of the year because I've had just some odd ball tires coming unglued and it's not ever seriously a, a um, tire gluing, actual tire glue that I felt is the issue. Sometimes when you're actually gluing the bead and you're, and you're spreading the glue inside and you put a rubber band on it right away, it pushes the glue up and doesn't sink down into the bead. So what I do is I glue the one side and what I'll do is I'll get a little bit of glue and just glue the, the, the gap a little bit and let the let the glue kind of run. But for instance, this is the perfect example. That, that glue never got to the very bottom. And what I'll do here is I'll just put a little glue, push down on it for a second or two, let it let it dry. Beautiful. And I'll move on to the next piece. And that just and that just guarantees that it's like if something does come unglued, it's something, you did all you could did do. all I can do. So <laughs> But if I didn't do that and if they came unglued, I would have been really upset. So um, it's a little bit extra time, but you know, I get, you know, I'm a sponsor from J Concepts and we do get product, but I don't want to waste product and you know, it's, it's, they'll last longer, I'll better run them throughout the whole weekend and I don't have any concerns at all. And uh, we'll go out there and hammer some laps. Everybody coming on, I'm officially completing two laps. Hot lap for the race. So far, make you a 35 5. Three minutes left.
have 12. So my top three in this class. Wow, and Spencer Ribbon comes by with an absolute burner here. He's up to the number one spot. We have a brand new top seed here. A 146.9 with a three. Mayfield was a 146.9 with a three as well. So it went to six one thousandths of a second. Mayfield, a 146.937. Ripken, a 146.931. Six one thousandths of a second. Nobody coming, nobody coming? None. Waiting on Lutz and waiting on Finn. Spencer Ripken going to be your top seed. Not by much, but that's right. Waiting on Finn. One more, one more. buggy I thought it was pretty good there was a couple things that I feel like it needed but still got the top seed and the overall run was pretty consistent um, and then we were just waiting to see what the natural car was going to do and it was a complete a complete bomb it wasn't very good at all and traction rolled hit a, hitting bumps it just didn't absorb anything out there so um, we're going to just go back to that direction um, to the e-buggy where we what we wanted to try and um, it was a 50-50 shot. One was going to definitely work and one wasn't. And of course it was one of the more important of the of the cars, which is the Nitro Buggy. Um, yeah, it kind of sucks I'm going to be, I think I'm like 11. So I'll get a crappy spot on the driver's stand, but I, I think uh, we're going to do one more, a couple more runs here after the seating because uh, they're opening up the track and uh, I think we'll be back up and uh, ready for the board. Well, good run in the uh, two classes there, especially the e-buggy. Uh, what are we mounting up here for tire this time? Yeah, I'm going to try some blue um, rehabs. Kind of, uh, kind of 
of want to run a bigger pin tire, a little bit stiffer of a pin, um, instead of trying a different compound. I feel like the blue compound is the way to go for speed, but uh, maybe this tread pattern will kind of allow it to last a little bit longer and have a little bit more smoother steering and uh, comfort for landing because the carcass is a little bit bigger, the tire diameter size is different, so um, I feel like this is a good cushion. And uh, we'll try it in pra practice right now and see where we go. Another pretty good run in here in the nitro buggy class. Talk to us about the about how the nitro went. Yeah, so uh, just put the blue reflexes on from my e buggy run. They're scuffed in, they're dialed in. We put some liquid rinse on, on like I mentioned earlier, and they're awesome. Uh, my, my nitro buggy it's the, it pushes a little bit, but I think as the traction kind of gets up, the bumps form. I think it'll be a good combination, but yeah, just put in a clean run and happen to be second overall for the fastest three. My overall pace was awesome too, so a lot of good good things for tomorrow. So Okay, and uh, so Truggy, you got a one there. Nitro Buggy, a two. Uh, E-Buggy, what was that one? So E-Buggy, I got, a, I think, a ten. Not awesome, but it's something to build on. that gives me room to grow. Um, I'm going to, little buddy, Got the top seat with his V3.2E, so we're gonna kind of look at his, and then I'm gonna look at my nitro buggy and kind of feel some things out and hit the practice track, and do some laps. All right, Ryan, we got the a seating run in each class so far. We got the Truggy, the E buggy, and the nitro buggy. I believe you got two twos and a one yep. for the uh, seating, so looking pretty solid. Uh, tell us about the, how things are feeling on the different vehicles and uh, wrap it up. Yeah, it was a good day. Uh, I got like a couple practice runs with my nitro car in the morning, ran my truck and my e-buggy once, and then we got right into seating and uh, yeah, straight off the trailer all the cars felt super good. Uh, still running the same set of packages from the Mugen Challenge and uh, just kind of ran through a little bit of tires. Started on a uh, green reflex on all the cars. Ended up on the blue reflex, and then uh, tried and practiced again afterwards. Put some blue detoxes on, and all of them felt, you know, really good. They uh, tons of forward grip out there. Just kind of got to watch the how much water's on the track. That kind of depends on uh, that will tell you what compound to run. So, um, but yeah, we got the top seat in this car was super good. Uh, very, very fast, easy to drive. The track's probably going to get a little rough, more rough as we you know, go on with the weekend, so I kind of got to pay attention to that. But yeah, overall, a good day. All the cars worked awesome, all the tires are working great. And uh, we'll reset and go for it tomorrow and see how long goes. I mean, we've done a, kind of a lot of races this year considering you know everything we've gone through in the world here. We're, we're doing a bunch of races, and all these tracks are a lot of different. You know, we're, you know, PMB, it's just a monster track, a lot of different obstacles, some gimmicks out there. Yeah. Then we got Wicked Weekend, we got the Mugen Challenge, we're here, you did Nitro Challenge. I mean, I don't know what one of these tracks is the same as the other. Um, no. I mean, what do you compare this to? I mean, is there anything to compare this one to? I guess this is like the size of PMB, but it drives like AMS. You know, I guess it's like, you know, it's indoor, you know, nice red clay, dirt super good, um, but it's not quite as dusty as PMB. Seems to hold up a little bit better, kind of like an AMS does. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, but it looks the same, but it doesn't really compare. It definitely drives different. It's a different feel, totally. And, uh, but yeah, we've had, like you said, we've done a lot of racing. Uh, we definitely had some downtime, but once we got going again, you know, myself, you, Spencer, you know, we've been hitting it as much as we can anywhere we can go. Did Surf City last week, so. Uh, yeah, it's nice to be back racing again. We're still getting in a lot of racing, uh, even with uh, you know, the shutdown there for a little while. So, yeah, cars are good. Uh, it's been nice to go to all these different tracks, like you said, and they've all, you know, the cars have worked really well. Uh, same with the Oklahoma stuff. And, uh, yeah, excited for uh, to finish the year. But uh, first, we got to go try to team you tomorrow. All right, Dakota, we're, uh, we're here at the Southern Nationals. Uh, your first time here, I believe. Yeah. Uh, we just came off of running the Turf Nats. You had a hell of a race there, uh, dominating. You've won a lot of races this year. And uh, talk to us about resetting again and driving out here long ways away from where you're living. 
and uh, being competitive again. Yeah, this is def definitely a lot different than uh, than uh, ten scale turf. Uh, pretty pretty low grip here. The grip's definitely coming up. The track is uh, grooving up pretty nicely, and uh, you know having some fun out here. The layout is, is a lot of fun. Has a good flow to it. So yeah, just kind of getting back into the swing of things with eight scale. Um, had a pretty long drive, like you said, out here. Um, definitely definitely a full day. It was like 15, 16 hours. Um, but went pretty smoothly. Got out here, and uh, yeah, just kind of dialing everything in. Everything feels pretty close and is good. Um, everyone's pretty close out there speed-wise. It's just uh, you know a couple of mistakes and uh, just being committed to the, the track and your line. So just making some small changes now. We did seating, so we kind of know where we're at, and then we have a few more hours of practice to kind of dial everything in and, and, get, and get all the fine-tuning and figure out the setup and try some tires and things like that. So what's it like to uh, you know you've won a lot of races this year already, both you know both scales. Um, what's it like to, to kind of come in and start fresh again? You know, when you win or anybody wins, you always kind of, you're on a little bit of a high. You're like, oh, things went well. But then you go to the next race and all of a sudden it's like we're starting all over again. Yep. It's, you got to fall your way back to the top, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's hard. I mean, uh, once once Monday comes around, Monday ends and uh, it's forgotten about. It's it's another week and there's, a, there's another race. So, yeah, it's definitely definitely nice to have a good weekend and then you know you can carry that momentum into into the, the next weekend but yeah it, it, it's a different race it's a different game out here and uh, we're starting all over again all right well we'll check in with you when we start qualifying uh, you're gonna run some more practice here today I think we're running until about 10 tonight of practice and uh, guys are gonna start to get a little quicker in the track I think is gonna change maybe get a little more difficult and uh, starting to scale up a little bit. Some of that, that top texture, I think, is breaking off now. And um, I think that it might start getting a little bit tougher to drive, and that's going to change things. Yeah, the groove actually happened really quick, a lot quicker than I was expecting. Uh, the traction kind of came up with that. Still a little bit of floating skatey out there, but there's definitely a lot more grip. And then the top wheel that has a groove on it and is turning black is now starting to break away in a, quite a few spots on the track. Uh, it's nothing major right now, no holes or anything, but kind of that top layer is flaking off and kind of creating a little bit of just small little ripples right now. So we'll keep an eye on that, see how it uh, changes, and uh, keep on keep on moving along.
Online Motor City. Live out there on the track right now. Really giving everybody at home. After one lap, Born Horse and Timo Lutz and Aachen. We've got Techno, TRR, Techno, Adama, and HD Racing, my top five. Brandon Rose already qualified. Top five from the B group in Truggy. Let's see if he can do it again here. B Rose having a good morning at the 2020 Southern National. Out here in West Louisiana. Just hanging on to the top ten, but it's going to be Ben and Mayfield separated by three tenths by Larry, number three tenths back, and Tipo less than one tenth back. So top five, 1.5 seconds between the top five right now. And it's going to be Brunson six, Ogden seven, Ripken eight, Van Dalen nine, Wiggins in the ten, Rose eleven, one one twelve, Green and Green thirteen. So Mayfield now got the arm out the window, a 2.2 second race lead right now, as he is, let's give him some love out there. One minute in left. the Fugin, MBX 8E for Mayfield, the traditional flow, red, white, and purple. No outdoor racing for us this weekend. 45 seconds left. I don't think we'll be seeing the white body, that's usually on our outdoor at night. And it's like, look, we're not, we're not on pace. We're not doing that great. But um, I try to have positive energy in the pits. It sucks when people are, are, are negative energy in the pits. It kind of just takes away the fun and that, uh, you know, hoping for something positive to happen. So that's kind of what I thrive off of. I like smile and happiness. That's kind of how I, uh, how I roll. Um, 
and you know turning it around and just some something small like you know getting your lunch on time or getting a good food for lunch to just completely change your day. Uh, and it could be something completely outside the track, you know, when we're at these events that just, you know, got a good night's sleep, come in back tomorrow morning, you know, fresh and rested, ready to go. Um, it's just kind of the small stuff that kind of adds up to become something great for the racing. All right, Dakota, um, first round, kind of going okay here so yeah. far. Uh, yesterday you weren't super comfortable or super happy. Uh, I would assume that you're getting there. The speed is coming, which just seems to be natural for you, but getting that consistency down, right? Yeah, definitely going went better than I did yesterday. I uh, got the car closer, closer um, I'm making better choices and driving better. So I'm still a little, feeling a little bit uncomfortable out there, uh, but we're going to keep working on it, keep getting the cars more dialed in and good to go. So two seconds so far for the round, I'll take it. Uh, I had a kind of like a bad mistake in, uh, in both classes. Um, so still finishing, you know, in the top three is always nice. And I uh, just kind of keep improving and uh, hopefully I get some better points. So I think we kind of caught on film your end of your truggy race <laughs> yeah. where you brushed the pipe and um, you just kind of went for the finish line even though it was in the pit lane. You knew the, yeah. you knew the start finish line went through there. So talk to us about kind of like just thinking about that at the last second. Yeah, me and Ryan were uh, pretty much tied going to the last lap. I think there was like one tenth difference. Um, so we're both going for it, and it, there's a little bit of a hole developing coming out of the straight. And I just kind of came in a little bit too hard, caught it, and then kind of sucked me into the pipe, hit the pipe, and uh, it shot me left. So it was either uh, slow down, lift, and uh, go down the straightaway, or uh, keep keep the throttle on and just turn right and uh, went through a went through pit lane and uh, finished in pit lane. <laughs> and then another crazy one was in the buggy where you did like, I don't know, 20, 20, uh, yeah. 20, 360s. You hit that little pipe and you kind yeah. of like, I'm going to whip this around and then all of a sudden you got stuck under the pipe. And it was a little bit of a disaster going on. Yeah, there. it was a really simple mistake. Uh, a really easy mistake shouldn't have cost me very much time. It just kind of how it worked out. The back tire clipped that pipe and uh, I just was just doing donuts. I don't know how many I did. I did a lot though. And uh, so then I went to go again. I was in the dust and went under the pipe and then tried to get back on the track and then flipped over and it was it was a silly little mistake and it turned into a to a big thing so yeah then you put a mega charge on got down there in the low 34s and uh, almost won the qualifier yeah car was feeling good the tires started to come in um, i ran a new set and i think once you get that edge knocked off the car starts to get better once you get a little bit of heat in the tires you get a little bit more grip so car was getting better um, i was kind of finding my group out there and uh, definitely a Definitely a little frustrated with uh, with the lap that I had earlier on in the race. So. Hi Ryan, had a couple good runs already. Uh, Truggy and e buggy. Uh, track changed a little bit today. A uh, couple bumps out there, a little bit of sandstorm in a couple corners. Uh, what's it like to drive today? And you you kind of drove it through and had a couple pretty good solid runs. Yeah, track's a little different. Uh, the grip's still there, lots of traction. Kind of feels like sandpaper when you touch it with your hand. But there's a lot of uh, parts that are breaking apart now, so there's still a lot of dust out there. Um, but yeah, Druggy went well, battled with Dakota, and uh, it was super fast, running the aqua compound. And uh, yeah, just put in a solid run. He made a bobble at the end, so got it by a second or two. and then. E buggy just put in a solid drive, uh, no real big mistakes. Uh, I was a little off on pace, it could have went super fast, but had a couple crashes. I think I got it by half a second or so there at the end. So um, yeah, it's just you got to drive pretty, uh, pretty calm and uh, can't you know can't make huge mistakes. Everybody's gonna make little bobbles, but you got to just keep driving and uh, get back in your rhythm. So we've got the nitro buggy coming up, doing a couple. Uh, couple maintenance items here, making sure it's ready to go, and hopefully in qualifying uh, with another TQ. Alright, so let's look at this, uh, what, are you, what are we doing to this engine here? Well, I just always pull it out, check the clutch shoes, see how they're wearing here. As you can see, there's a little black, and uh, check the sides of them. If there's any, like, aluminum mushrooming over on this side, kind of clean that off, and then check it with a pair of calipers, and kind of check the measurements, see how worn they are. And then my clutch bell was a little worn, teeth are getting a little thin, so pop a new clutch bell on there and uh, clean up the air filter a little bit, check the exhaust gaskets, make sure they're all solid and tight still, and 
should be good to go. So uh, with a new clutch bell, will you do anything to the inside of it before you put it on? Or? Yeah, basically I use some brake cleaner or motor spray, clean this out and uh, with some scotch Brite and uh, get all this black oxide off there. Not all of it, but the, as most, like most of it you can. Mainly because with the carbon shoes, that black stuff will kind of get on these carbon shoes and uh, destroy them. So if you're running all aluminum, it's not as important to do that, but with a carbon shoe, you want to definitely try to get all that black stuff off as much as possible. And clean all these things off with motor spray and try to get all your oils off from your hands and whatever you've been touching so that everything's fresh and clean. So, so when you see people that break in their clutch when they go up, like for a main, and they, and they break the clutch in on pit, pit lane, will you have to do that with the bell? with the clutch bell or because your shoes are old it won't matter? Uh, even when I run a new clutch I don't typically break them in. I think it just prematurely wears them out some. It's really hard on a clutch when you do that. So as long as everything's clean and you take this black oxide off um, you shouldn't have to really worry about that. And of course some people gotta like if you run bearings that have a lot of grease or oil in them and you're not running a vented clutch bell then that oil and grease can get on your clutch shoes and you gotta burn it off. But most of the time, with a vented clutch bell, that oil is going to come out this direction, and so you're not really going to have to worry about it. Uh, or blow your bearings out before you put it in there, and uh, you should never have to really burn them in like that. But when you burn them in like that, I feel like that just cuts the life expectancy of the clutch in half because it's really hard on them. Um, but yeah, so typically I try not to do that unless for some reason I have a, a bearing and the clutch starts slipping, then I'll come in and burn it off. Um, but that's very rare that that happens. Yeah, cars are awesome. Tracks straight up and a little uh, 
Thanks a lot, man. All right, your top qualifier, Ryan Mayfield, pro nitro buggy here at the 2020 Southern National. All right, Jackson, uh, good first run there in the uh, nitro buggy class. I think you got third for the round. Yeah. And uh, let's talk about how you did it and uh, what was the key. So uh, I've kind of had a lackluster a couple of races, so I just kind of, Ryan came over to me and just said, you know, take a chill pill. And uh, I had to wait for my aqua reflexes to kind of come in there, but uh, they were awesome. I felt like I'm kind of ahead, like kind of in it. So, you know, just keep a cool head on myself and I know I have the car. Yeah, I mean, the, the track is getting bumpier. Uh, there's some trouble areas, uh, a little, you know, kind of everywhere. You yeah, know, there's little trouble areas everywhere. And uh, what do you find in, while you're driving that you can kind of uh, avoid some of these things and just kind of keep it on four wheels? I know if I can just kind of make my time up in the smooth, like the front section, you, just, you know, be close to the pipe, kind of avoid the bumps and kind of let the car work through itself, let the suspension do the work, and then kind of make my time up. Um, I'm, I really, I have a really good line around the rhythm section and the carousel corners. I feel like that's probably one of my favorite corners. And then uh, just being patient, going through the bumps, and then we have a gnarly drop down, so just making sure you don't over steer going down it. similar to e-buggy, uh, where it's getting uh, starting to break apart in a couple spots. You know, those spots are just kind of getting bigger, it's not really breaking up uh, anywhere else. Uh, the end of the straightaway is starting to have a little bit of roughness to it, uh, but yeah, the car is really good, kind of started off slow, uh, no mistakes, just waiting for the tires to kind of come in, and uh, once the tires came in, picked up like a second a lap, so, uh, but yeah, it was a good clean run. Um, put in a solid drive, car super easy to drive, very predictable, which is nice for a track like this. So yeah, just uh, kind of reset, go for it again. Something that's kind of unique at all these races we're doing lately is, in Nitro, is you don't really get a warm up. Uh, you gotta get the car going right away. Uh, you're basically on the clock your first time around the whole track. Uh, you know, there was a time in RC where, I mean, it felt like we had three, four, five minutes of warm-up sometimes. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, you'd run a whole, almost a qualifier worth of time, and then you're on the clock. And uh, now you don't really have any time for those adjustments, right? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, like you said, you come out, you do a, your check-in lap, and then you're on the clock, so you don't have any time. Uh, really kind of got to sight the track, you know, in one lap. And uh, so it's really important to space yourself apart, you know what I mean, to get a good, uh, you know, good spot, try not to catch anybody or anybody catch you. And uh, yeah, back in the day, we'd get two or three minutes at least, you know, every time we'd go up there and uh, really feel out the car, feel out the track. And yeah, now with these bigger events with so many entries, they're just trying to rush through the program, try to get done, you know, at a decent hour. So kind of uh, limits how much time you can run. So. But yeah, it's uh, part of the racing now. You just kind of got to make sure your car's uh, good. You don't really have a lot of time to make a bunch of changes to it because you don't have that warm up to rely on. So you got to show up with the car ready to go from the house and you know hope for the best and hopefully it works good. <laughs> The all comes on the inside of the field. Mayfield having a day out there to see if he can keep this going. Here it 
Lakers through the six pack. Owen Schumacher leads the TQ from round one. Mayfield coming up to the top over. Purple. Gotta love the waterfall on that. And around one, two, three, the deep buggy. Lewis Mayfield, Ben Camelot. Not top three, Van Dana and the four. Then we five, plus six. Lux, keep up four points in the four. Lewis is what? A lot of us came here to watch this weekend. We can only wish to be as talented as these racers with an RC in our hand. It's good to dream. So far, uh, talk to us about that run. 
Yeah, I mean, it kind of all started with getting a good run an e-buggy down kind of the direction that we wanted to go with that. And um, yeah, just really working with Jackson and me and Kurt. You know, you know, Jackson's been going good this weekend and he had some things a little bit different, so we were working together on, you know, why we were running it and you know, just getting some insight from the team. Um, it's always good when you know, like, the car is working, when another driver is doing well with it. But at the same time, it's like you wish that that was you. Uh, but the e-buggy run was really good. Uh, put on some things with that in the nitro car, the nitro buggy car. I kind of went on a different tire strategy than Dakota and Mayfield. Um, and it kind of was went pretty good. I, I thought I had my best drive, uh, consistency-wise. And I didn't really think the car was all that magical, but to be honest, it seems like everyone's car is not that magical. If I could just have a little bit of a little bit of more comfort, we'll be right up there for round three, so we'll see what happens. All right, Dakota, let's talk here. Um, you got on the track a couple more times. Um, track's getting a little bumpier. Yeah. Uh, your, speed, your speed still looks good. Uh, talk to us about what uh, you notice is changing and uh, your chances here in round three. Yeah, track is actually changing uh, quite quickly. Uh, we think we only have a day and a half on it, and the track has completely changed uh, a, a lot, a lot more than I was expecting it to. It's starting to get rough now, um, and the holes and kind of little uh, little flakes here and there that are coming off the track are now kind of covering the groove. So it's getting quite dusty again. Um, so some of the changes I made to the car, um, I'm kind of going back now to where where I came here with, and uh, I think I think went pretty good. Um, I feel starting to feel more comfortable now. Just got to eliminate some of the mistakes, and uh, I, I think we'll be good. So talk to us. Did you change anything tire-wise that round? Or are you going to make any changes going into the third round? Yeah, I've been pretty much running reflexes the whole weekend. Um, that's kind of the go-to tire for everyone, and it's always good, always solid. And with the dust here and then the groove, it's a very good uh, medium tire where it has good grip. It also kind of has has something for the dust. You're not kind of all over the place once you get those spots. So I've been running the reflex. Um, we started out on green compounds, and then once the grip started to come up today, we were running blue and aqua. I've been kind of going back and forth. Uh, I ran blue and druggy, and it felt pretty good. And then I ran aqua and uh, e-buggy and extra buggy last round, and it felt pretty good as well. So. Yeah, I think that I think that we can kind of do either. Uh, I think as the grip continues to come up, the aqua seem like they're a little bit more stable. Uh, they're a little bit harder, and uh, they still have pretty good grip out there. Hi Ryan, we're wrapping up uh, round two of qualifying, getting into round three here, and uh, you got a good streak going. Been TQing uh, the different classes each time. Uh, the cars are looking good, but uh, you're having to make some adjustments on the fly here. The, the track keeps changing a little each round, and uh, what are you doing to keep up with the conditions and still keeping your speed uh, at the top? Yeah, cars have been really good. Uh, tracks get more rough, and it's uh, kind of changing how the car is driving because it's there's like some sections that are very broken up, dusty, and loose, and then you immediately transition into like a super high traction area. So, uh, gonna make a few changes on the car. I'm gonna test it on my truck for the third round, going up in a little bit heavier dip oils. Uh, then buggy, I'm going to go to a, a little bit different tire to see if it'll kind of get to the dusty areas a little bit better so that transition isn't so abrupt. Um, so yeah, first two rounds went really good, I was able to TQ uh, all three cars. So now I can use this third round uh, as a little bit of a test session, try a few things. Um, but yeah, nothing, not making anything crazy, just uh, small changes just to see, get a little more drivability and uh, see what happens. I mean, this track is pretty damn cool layout. Um, you know, the whole jumping up top, the little waterfall thing coming down, and some unique things about this track. There's a legit rhythm section where, I mean, you're in a qualifier, and you're, you've, you've done it three different ways in a qualifier. So what's it like being on a track like this where we got some unique things in a legitimate rhythm section? Yeah, we've been, I've been crying about not having a good rhythm section at a race, you know, for a long time, and we got one here. It's not very big, but it's right out of a 180, and with the way that the surface is, it's very tricky, um, and like the, the line that I was trying to do earlier in qualifying, other people weren't doing it, so there wasn't really a groove there, so I, I kind of had to adjust, and then a couple guys were doing it during the run, and I saw the groove kind of coming in, so then I started doing it, and so, yeah, it's cool. It gives you an opportunity to 
uh, potentially get off sequence with the car in front of you, maybe get by them or gain a little bit of momentum on them. And then, yeah, the, there's a wall back there that's probably, you know, 10 feet high. I mean, it's definitely well above your head when you're standing next to it. It's a straight vertical drop coming right down it. So I don't know if I've ever really driven on something like that. It's pretty cool. There's a lot of time to be gained and lost coming down that especially where you can stay out of the dust and get the car to turn coming down the hill. And a big crossover jumps, you know, it's cool. It can go wrong, and when it does go wrong, it's really wrong. Um, but, yeah, the whole track is, is a lot of fun. These guys did an awesome job. This place normally has a ton of elevation, which we, we got it this year again. And uh, it's going to keep getting more interesting out there with the conditions getting a little more rough, more dusty. So it's going to be a turn into a little more of a tire game and definitely more of a driver's game as these mains, these long mains get going. One TQ of all three, round two TQ of all three. Complete domination. Everybody just trying to get a TQ for themselves. Mayfield currently hogging them all. And of course he is the leader right now. After just one lap, Mayfield, the pro defender, Jackson Brunson. The track is rough. Getting worse. Building some character. So the pro defender, the TL all year leader, on a 9519, Drake at a 9525. So Dakota, about six seconds quicker than Adams' TQ time. Ryan Cavallari in the S works, running second. Tebow third, Mayfield fourth, and Jackson Brunson top five. Rifkin running sixth, Seth Van Dalen running seventh. Mason Fuller eighth, Spencer Hecker ninth, Bill Bonhoeffs, and Spencer Hecker. 30 seconds to go. And that's going to put it right back in the hands of Mayfield, going all the way down to ninth, making a mistake early, back to the lead by three seconds, with only five seconds to go for the Magic, continuing for the movie driver on Jay Concept, all the way down the front straight away goes Mayfield. Time has expired on the master clock, looking to go seven for seven in TQs. Keep them going until your name is called. Oh, the color rolls it over again before this roller here. Nobody's done yet. Keep them going. So Ryan Mayfield has run seven qualifiers so far today and has TQ'd all seven times. This is his eighth and he's got one second on Dakota. We're talking Brian Kinwall days. Three minutes left. Last time I seen that. I'm sure it's happened more frequently but that's a pretty dominating day, if I say so myself. And it's still a two-second lead for Mayfield over Fend. Fend with the 10th on Bornhorst. Bornhorst a 10th on Tebow. Tebow a 10th on Van Dalen. So everybody's right there behind Mayfield, two seconds back. Bornhorst, Fend, Tebow, Van Dalen, and Cavalier with a five-way battle for second place right here. 345 down, 115 to go, but not so fast, says Dakota Fend. Only a half a second behind Mayfield, so Dakota saying, I'm sick of hearing all about Mayfield. Let me show you what I got. Van Dalen, another two and a half back, and just like that, it was a half a second now back to a second and a half with one minute to go here. Let's uh, play your lady over here talk about Another two rounds in here, uh, a Truggy and an E-Buggy. The Truggy one, you looked like you kind of had that thing pretty wrapped up. Um, then just, you know, kind of got loose on you, got got away from you on a couple laps, and uh, the E-Buggy was pretty solid. So talk to us about the two runs. Yeah, you know, I, I'm getting there. Uh, it's nice I'm starting second both, you know, so I'm definitely, definitely in the hunt. Um, you know, Ryan's been on this weekend, and uh, we're just uh, keep plugging away and, and, you know, keep trying to get closer and closer and, uh, you know, make a race out of it in the mains. 
Yeah, I mean, in that buggy race, you certainly were making more than a race out of it. I mean, you were right there, uh, you know, for the win. Uh, anything you did different that time? Uh, I kind of went back in my setup a little bit to what I had started with, just because the group has come up quite a bit on the track. So, came up, went back with the setups, and uh, I felt a little bit more comfortable with making less mistakes. And, uh, you know, it's still pretty close to speed wise. So, that's been pretty good. Maybe make a couple small adjustments to the nitro buggy with what we learned off the e buggy and uh, just uh, see where we end up. So, uh, for nitro buggy now coming up, uh, anything different you're going to do there? Uh, I think I'm going to probably start with the same setup. Uh, I might maybe go down to the sway bar a little bit, get a little bit, a little bit more steering, get the car a little bit more into the track, um, and then just kind of have to decide on tires. Um, we've been running the Aquas for most of the weekend, uh, but I think with the track, kind of the sun coming down, the track getting a little bit colder, maybe go back to the blues and see how those are. All right, we got two more runs in here. Uh, one more left for the day. You got the Truggy uh, round three that you just ran, and then the e-buggy and uh, continued uh, the, the good driving. Just one mistake with the Truggy. Uh, probably should have really cost you the qualifier, but Dakota had one, two monster mistakes and uh, you were fast. I mean, you came back in that race. Yeah, truck, I uh, made a few changes like we talked about earlier and it was better, but it, where I was picking up my throttle and stuff changed, so I kind of had to adapt. And, uh, the first lap went really good. I, I like over jumped the rhythm section, so I backed it off in the second lap, and it caught me. I made a mistake, and I just uh, kind of put my head down and just to see what what it was capable of. And yeah, caught, caught back up, got it a second. Dakota was going really good. I think I got within a second of him or so, and then he made a mistake. Um, so I ended up getting a, get another win, and that had to come through a bunch of traffic and stuff. So um, and then e buggy. Uh, ran a different set of tires and they felt awesome. That's the best that E-Buggy's felt all week. So, got another TQ, had another close race with Dakota. I think he was about a second behind. And so from what I learned in E-Buggy, gonna put it on the nitro car, see if it applies to that in this next round. Uh, hopefully uh, learn a little more for the main event tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, you know, as a spectator or an announcer, it's fun to announce that you've TQ'd all these rounds, but the reality is, is you, you've done this a lot before, and it doesn't really mean a whole lot unless you're improving or getting better or learning the track, because the track always changes. It's one thing if the track is identical every time you're out there, but the, the things change and you got to adapt on the fly, right? Yeah, the track's been different. Like, the line coming on the straightaway is changing every time. The back uh, right corner, big berm, there's a hole there, so I had to make that adjustment with my e-buggy. You couldn't go straight up the inside anymore. You kind of had to trip a little more wide. Um, so, yeah, it's all... It's changing every time, but you know, luckily the cars are very easy to drive, very predictable. The tires are gripping the dirt super good, so it goes straight and stops straight, so it makes it easier to you know manage all that stuff. <laughs> so yeah, but I uh, I've been pretty decent on the rough track stuff in my you know past races, so I kind of know what to expect and how to change my driving. Uh, so yeah, it's going good, but we still got. Three long main events tomorrow, anything can happen. Uh, you know, Dakota, Spencer, uh, Bornhorst, Tebow, all these guys have been going really fast in spurts. And I'm sure if they put in a solid 30 minute race, it's gonna be really close. And uh, so my job is now just to make sure my cars stay together and everything's prepped at 100%. And then just drive my best tomorrow and see what happens. I just want my food. You what? I just want my food. All right, Spencer. Two more rounds in here. Got a second in Truggy. That time in uh, E-Buggy. Uh, what'd you get, top five, six? Uh, I think the, that run in E-Buggy, it was like a six or seven. It wasn't that good. It, it was a good run. I, I can't have crashed car on the rhythm. Uh, but I ran um, a different tire. Didn't change to say I ran a different tire, just was a little bit slower on my car for how I have it set up. I'm gonna go back to running green or um, aqua reflexes on uh, my natural car, which is the best tire I ran on on my e-buggy. So did a little experiment on the tire testing. I'm gonna start fourth and truggy in the main, third and e-buggy, and um, one more solid run in nitro buggy, and uh, hopefully it'll put me in the top four or three would be good. So. Picking up the pace, 
it's definitely nice to uh, get a little bit of momentum going into tomorrow, kind of peaking at a good time. Um, I still think there's some more progress to be made, and I'm looking forward to showing it on the track. All right, man. Um, talk to us about what you're doing here. So I was just um, changing some diff oils on my nitro car. So I'm just putting the sway bar linkage back to uh, where I was running it. And uh, I got to do the center diff and then the rear diff. So as I'm, ch as I'm changing the diff oil, I'm also checking to see if there's anything messed up with the suspension, uh, wheel insert, sway bar bent, and stuff like that. Just general maintenance. Um, it's kind of typical here when you run eight scale cars. So yeah, fun, fun. has not lost the race yet today, going for nine for nine. A 300 pulling game, if you will. Still need some marshals out there. Once again, we should have Hecker, Setzer, Hooks, Reeves, Watson, Caldwell, Westergaard, Little Bob, Joey Bordon, Smith, Rippey, Jeffrey, Cranford. All out to the track, guys. All right, let's roll them out. Here we go. Got to get that one lap in the books, and we'll give you the running order. Watch it onto the straightaway, lower down the front straight, all clear, all clear, all clear, all clear. Straightaway is clear, everything's clear, we're rocking and rolling here. Four minutes left. One minute down and four minutes to go, one down and four to go. So it's Mayfield, Ogden, Tico, Rickman, Lutcher, top five. Brandon Rose in six, Brunson seven, Dakota Fett eight, Van Baylen nine, Adam Drake ten, Cavalieri, Cornhorse, Williams, and Fuller. Rounding out the field, but it's all Mayfield. Mayfield now with a three-second lead over Spencer Ripken. A couple of Arizona boys running one-two. Ripken changing his paint job up. Still getting familiar with that one. Used to be purple and blue forever, so I gotta find Ripken out there. Have you been on fire all day, man? Nine for nine. I think that's the first time ever in Southern Nationals history, so congratulations. Your buggy was definitely on fire. What tires did you go out on this time? Yeah, that was an 82 stalker, so uh, that should be my main tire. It felt good, it was comfortable, still fast, so yeah, looking good for tomorrow. Prep my car and go for it. Awesome, man. Ryan Mayfield, nine for nine. All right, we got through qualifying here. Uh, Nitro buggy was the last one up, of course, and uh, went for a clean sweep of qualifying. It wasn't easy. Uh, had a tough, tough last run. Got pressured by just about everybody out there at one point or another. Was in second, and a little bit of a sketchy last lap. Explain to us uh, how it went. Yeah, it was uh, the car felt good. Uh, it was uh, yeah, just kind of putting in a solid drive, trying not to make any mistakes. And the car felt, you know, super good, still super safe, easy to drive. And then, uh, yeah, everybody was kind of within a second, two seconds. I think at one point I was like three seconds up. And then, yeah, last lap just uh, with some traffic, got a little sketchy, bounced off a couple pipes. Um, and Spencer got pretty, pretty close on the last lap, got within about a second, I think. So, um, but yeah, it was good. It was nice to finish up the day. Uh, you know, the goal is to try to go win every time you're on the track, and I was able to do that today, but. That doesn't mean anything tomorrow, so we gotta get ready and prep these things and focus on 30 minute long race. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it, to me, especially at these nitro races, is everyone's different. Every qualifier is different, and it's the important thing is is running well and, and liking your equipment each time because as the track is changing, you you have to feel confident because the main will be different too. Yeah, yeah. So that's what was good about all these, you know, all three of my cars and. It felt the same, kind of no matter what tire I put on it, which was nice. It felt the same no matter what the track was doing. So um, that's definitely what you want to see out of a, especially for a long run car. You want predictability and drivability. So that's what I have, and uh, hopefully tomorrow the track is, uh, you know, kind of the same, feels the same grip level wise. I'm sure it's gonna be a little more rough, which you know that's just the same for everybody. So, uh, but yeah, the car's going pretty good through the bumps. And uh, just gonna have to adjust my driving style as the main goes on. It's gonna change for sure. And, yeah, it should be good. All right, Spencer, we're going over the results here. Um, great run in the last round. Uh, you got the you got the buggies coming together here, and uh, it's been it's been a hard road. I've been working hard here in the pits with the AE guys. And where'd you end up qualifying? 
Um, yeah, the last the last Nitro Buggy run was definitely a huge, huge improvement to the speed of what we got. Um, I did have I did have a, a Marshall crash out there, and was still able to come up second, with a, a second behind Ryan. Um, puts me second overall. I'm so excited for tomorrow now because now I feel like I got a race car. Kurt's been a huge help. Jackson, Lee, and um, this whole crew has been really, really good. Um, of course, you know, the tires are working pretty awesome. Um, it seems like Ryan probably likes a little bit of the, the Aqua Stalker. I kind of like the, the Aqua Reflexes. Um, I could be mistaken on what he, what he ran, but um, I'm going to run the, the, the Aqua Reflexes tomorrow. Um, on both my buggies and truck, and we're gonna call it a day and see where we lie. All right, man. Great run. Uh, are you gonna get some practice in here, or are they closing the track? Oh, they're, yeah, they're they're watering the track. So we already ate dinner. We got Uber Eats. So I'm gonna go shower and um, play on my phone a little bit and go to bed. All right, Dakota. You've had a good day, really, overall. Um, you know. Talk to us about the last round of buggy. I know you weren't super happy with how the, the run went, but you're trying some things. You tried some tires. Uh, what'd you find out, and what's gonna happen? Do you think for the mains tomorrow? Yeah, I tried some things. Um, just trying to figure figure out main tires, and then made a couple set changes as well. Uh, not sure if it was the right direction or not. Gonna think about it tonight, and uh, you know, come back and see how the track is developing tomorrow and stuff. Make decision. The track's changing a lot now. It's getting pretty pretty rough out there. Um, and I'm sure it's going to get even rougher as the race goes on. So we'll see. Um, go get some dinner, chill out for a little bit, and uh, we'll come back tomorrow with a fresh mind and uh, keep on pushing. Yeah, I mean, out of everybody here, you've had some great results today. Um, you know, obviously, some are easier than others out there in the qualifiers. The track's getting more brutal. But, uh, I mean, you've showed a lot of, uh, you know, motivation here, keeping the thing going, uh, working on it every round, and, uh, you know, you've had some good results. Yeah, I mean, you just gotta, gotta keep on working at it, and, uh, you know, we're, we're doing our best here, working as a team, and, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully we'll figure something out for the main. Definitely still in the hunt, um, and, uh, you know, with, with how I've been feeling, it's, you know, still, still some good results, and we're still starting up front, you know, to have a chance at it, so I'll take it. Well, like I said, we'll, uh, we'll sleep it off tonight, come back tomorrow, and uh, be ready for the main.
Dakota almost doing the same thing again. He got a little sideways and was heading to the outside pipe, but he saved it. Underneath the crossover, under the back right bird, is your battle over the roller by staging and down the street. Oh, the Dakota going to go wide. I thought he was going to ride hitting the bump, but they won't go in the pit lane that time by at 7.45. So pit stops coming up. All right, so Dakota Bennett, Ryan Mayfield both coming in the pit lane at the same time. That's going to give Ryan Cavallari and that white S words the lead now. The Cavallari going underneath the crossover. He's going to have to come in soon here. But so here he comes with the all white truck, and now Cavallari going to give up the lead. As he comes in the pit lane, the Reddits are 18 minutes down, 12 to go, drivers 18 down and 12 to go. Some of the Dakota fan Ryan Cavallari is going to work through Seth Van Dalen and Jared Tebow, our podium right now, fast off of the race. Our top qualifier, Mayfield, down in the 11th spot with a 34.6. Ben, now with a 15 second lead on the field. Over Cavallari, Cavallari with six seconds on Rickman, Rickman with ten on Van Dalen, and Van Dalen with three seconds on Tito. All right, three and a half to go, drivers, three and a half to go. It's Ben, Cavallari, Tito, Lutz, and Rose, and now Seth Van Dalen, only one second behind B. Rose in the battle for the podium into the burn. Cavallari now 25 seconds behind Dakota Fenn. So Dakota Fenn with one minute to go. Trying to put it on cruise control here. Your leader at the end of the straightaway. Down that drop down. Orange and blue heading into the six pack. Double, double, double goes the leader Dakota Fenn. Up and over the duck line to see double. Who's your leader at the front? And down the straightaway. Lutz right there in fifth, and B. Rose, so we got the battle with 30 seconds to go. Oh, uh, into the pipe goes Van Dalen, Lutz, oh, Lutz going to hit the pipe. B. Rose back onto the podium here. Can Brandon Rose get by one more and move up to fourth? 20 seconds to go, will they make it by for another lap? Here they come down the hill, 15 seconds, they should make it by. Into the burn over there, they're coming up on the rim, going to let him get on by. Eight seconds to go, Van Halen's going to make it by, Rose's going to make it by, one more time, will be Dakota Band. Finish the lap you are on, let's see if B. Rose has anything for Van Halen, they're both on the podium right now. Yeah, I mean, it was a 
really the track's getting tougher, and that's just for truggy. Uh, I've seen you guys adjusting lines, you're trying things. Yeah. Uh, coming on the straightaway, there seems to be no spot to go. Uh, they put some plaques out there, so you guys are trying to drive over the plaques, <laughs> and then you're trying to drive through the holes, going outside. I mean, there seems to be not really, there's a couple areas where there's not a good line. Yeah, there's a few spots. Uh, it's mostly on the right side. The left side's pretty smooth and grouped up. There's a lot of grip over there, and then the right side kind of is broken apart and getting pretty bumpy. So two different track surfaces definitely makes it tough to try and choose tires and uh, you know get the setup right. We're trying to uh, you know to go up and things that way it's uh, safer and easier to drive on the high grip. And then you get to the dusty sections and you're sliding all over. So definitely no great answers out there. Um, the lines are definitely tough as well. It's getting uh, it's getting pretty pretty bumpy out there. There's not really very many good spots. You want to go wide to avoid the bumps and then it's just super loose and low me. So we'll see. Um, I'm sure we're probably going to be adjusting lines quite a lot as the race goes on, just trying to find the best line that we're comfortable with and uh, that we can get through every lap. Main number one, Marshall, pay attention. Good luck drivers are going racing on the sound of the tone. All right, we have one pro eating in the books. This will be the first of two for our e buggy eating. Look at that battle for third. That's going to be Born Horse pushing the issue. Going to get around Spencer and Tebow wants by as well. And he gets by. And then Mayfield and Finn. You can tell the track definitely got some character in it now. Oh, and Mayfield going to get all sideways. Going to get back on all four. But get up that race lead right here to DP. So pretty much, give or take, pretty much what happened. And Druggy made a little mistake early. Mm -hmm. He got out front and he never looked back. So I expect a rebuttal here out of Mayfield. That thing's going to be a million degrees after this one. So he's going to go outside. Ben is going to go inside on the last turn. Separation five tenths of a second. And it's Tebow, Rifkin, Rose, Born Horse Cavalier, Hooks. And that's my top 10. What a weekend for Brandon Rose for Team McDonough. This guy has been running up in the top 5 and 10 all weekend long. So Rose making a statement out here. Beautiful drive for him. Kailaska. Good to see my buddy and got his team working here at the Southern Nationals. So here comes the race lead. Oh no! Looks like Dakota going to get sucked into the pipe as he barely kissed it. But those front wheels got pulled into the pipe and he did a 360. So both of our leaders have made a mistake now. So track is definitely showing that uh, they may look real easy and not too bumpy on live RC. But uh, it's pretty smooth, 75%, 70% of the way around. It's that 30%. It's got those big old bumps and what makes off-road so great. If we wanted a real smooth track, we'd be carpet racing. We're here for off-road and that's what we plan to do. 30 seconds left. Mayfield going to make it across the line here with 23 seconds to go. Born Horse has caught Rifkin down the waterfall. 17 seconds to go. So that's going to be the battle for third right there. 10 seconds. Oh, Born Horse going to get by here. 8 seconds. And then Rifkin going to kiss the pipe right here. Is he going to get by for one more with 3 to go? He is. So that's the time of the line. When he crossed the line, he will be done. Jared Tebow done. Five long and done. Anthony Westergaard done. Ryan Lutz done. So Ryan from Seth Fairman done. Jackson Brunson done. Adam Drake done. Tyler Hooks done. Dakota Fenn done. Mason Fuller done. Hi Ryan, we're here in the main day. Uh, we already got through the 30 minute Truggy main and one A main of the uh, e-buggy class. Uh, talk to us about the Truggy main. A little bit of a rough uh, outing. Uh, race was pretty good at the beginning, but uh, talk to us about kind of how it went. Yeah, it started pretty good. Uh, truck felt decent in warm-up, just kind of learning the track, new holes out there and stuff. And 
start of the race, and me and Dakota broke away pretty early. I uh, had a pretty decent lead, so we were battling, and he got around me. I uh, made a mistake over on the left side. He got by me, um, and then I we were battling. I was right behind him, and he made a mistake and kind of collected us. Huge crash over the step up, and uh, after that, my truck just kind of felt not the same. It was a pretty violent crash, you know, just a racing incident, and. Uh, so yeah, then did a pit stop and lost some time in the pits just on my my behalf, slid it in there so that my guy couldn't get it and went back out, tried to play catch up, ended up crashing, Marshall wasn't paying attention and I hit the throttle and it died. So yeah, just a rough chain of events that happened all in like four minutes and uh, it was a bummer. I could have at least driven around and got second, and but oh well, got back out there, drove around. I think got back in the top 10 or wherever I finished. So, but I learned a lot. Kind of learned that I wanted to change my tire program a little bit. So, went into e-buggy, made a tire change, and uh, put in a solid drive. Uh, won by quite a bit. And uh, so, yeah, got some confidence going into the nitro buggy because the change I made to my e-buggy, I'm going to apply to my nitro car. So, hopefully, nitro goes well, and then we got one more e-buggy at the end. All right, Spencer, we got two mains under our belt here at uh, Southern Nats, uh, you got the Truggy Main, a 30 minute Truggy Main. Uh, it was actually going pretty good for you. Uh, you were in contention, uh, then we ran the e-buggy race, and uh, another good race really for you. Uh, right to the end, you were, you were battling for the top three, but uh, talk to us about the Truggy Main and how that ended for you, and then uh, buggy e-buggy race. Yeah, the Truggy race was going pretty decent. Uh, I thought my Truggy was all right to drive. Um, I qualified fourth. And then while we were kind of deep into that race, um, I thought, you know, that fast my truck was probably a fourth place truck. And then when Mayfield kind of had a, a, an issue, I was running in third spot with like a 10 or 15 second um, window over fourth. So I'm like, I really can't catch who's in second, which is with Cavalieri. And like the best I can do right now is with my laps is to stick here in third. Um, I had another uh, failure in the rear end. So I kind of need to, we need to get that figured out. But the truggy was working pretty decent. Uh, I thought you know, it was the best it was the whole time. Um, but uh, we moved on to uh, e-buggy. E-buggy race was actually not bad. I, I got past on the last lap for third, but um, the car was good to drive. I need a little bit more speed on the straightaway, so I might get to go up a gear, um, pinion gear. So yeah, I didn't make any mistakes in the e-buggy run. Um, and yeah, a little off pace from Kev, from uh, Dakota and Mayfield, but uh, we're gonna try some different tires for the next one and uh, see how it goes. But I think for how they're taking the points, it's, it's A1 and A2s, and they're taking your best point out of the two. So uh, I'm sure we can improve on that four for the next round. All right, well, good job. We'll see you out there in the next main, which is the Nitro Buggy main, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty pumped for Nitro again. Some last minute tires situated here, learning from what we did in Truggy and E Buggy. Um, Going out with A3 reflexes. I seem to be liking the reflexes on my um, buggies more than the stalker. So Dakota's running reflexes. I think that's what he ran into e-buggy and his stuff was pretty dialed. So uh, looking forward to hammering out with the natural buggy main with um, all the guys on the track. All right, Dakota, we got two mains in here so far at the Southern Nats here on Sunday. Uh, Truggy main uh, went awesome for you. Uh, you had a good run in there. And, um, and then e-buggy main, uh, we had an A main number one. Talk to us about the A1 of uh, e-buggy. Yeah, it went pretty decent. Um, I had a couple mistakes um, after I got up to a good start. Got out front and then just had some mistakes and kind of fell out of my rhythm and uh, took took about a minute or so to kind of get back into it. And uh, by then it was too far too far back, um, so I was able to get a second. So car was feeling good, tires were feeling good, and uh, we'll just uh, decide on tires for this last last main and uh, see how it goes. So we got the Nitro Buggy main coming up, and uh, talk to us about prepping for that and getting ready for, for Nitro. Yeah, uh, so just kind of finish the prep on the car, you know, going through the diff, shocks, engine, everything like that. Making sure the car is good to go and I can have any issues. Um, and then I uh, got some tires prepped, got some uh, aqua stalkers and then aqua reflexes. So I have to decide on uh, which, which chart pattern I'm going to use in the main and uh, then go out there and try, try to avoid all those holes.
podium for the 2020 Southern Nationals here in West Monroe, Louisiana. Jared Tebow going to have to settle for second. Seven and a half seconds back. And Ogden going to finish fifth on the podium right there. Good job for the HP Racing buggy driver of Cole Ogden. And here comes Dakota Fenn, another podium for Settle for third in this one, and a good drive for Ryan Lutz, finishing exactly where he qualified in the fourth spot. And that is a race everybody has done. So we need Mayfield, Tebow, Fenn, Lutz, and Ogden over to the podium. race 30 minutes here uh, felt like two hours um, talk to us about how tough the track was out there and um, you had a pretty good finish I mean you started really well uh, the car looked good uh, just a couple little mistakes and you slid back but it's hard to fight out there yeah I have no excuses at all um, but the trip with the track and the car I was so pumped on how my car fell in the main um, I thought at the beginning I was driving pretty good, and I just clipped the bump coming on the straightaway and kind of fell back pretty pretty deep, and it just kind of caught me off guard and off rhythm, which was something that you really needed for this kind of uh, surface and track. But uh, you know, big big shout out to my sponsors. I appreciate uh, Paul and Jason here with J Concepts coming out for the tire support, and with Associated, uh, Kurt Wanger came out and helped me pit. Um, got the car pretty dialed in. We, we struggled coming when we came here with uh, early qualifying and practice and we got the car qualified in the second spot. I think we have a little bit of work to do on um, on my part driving. I think getting some better um, some better lines and just focusing a little bit better could be, could be something that um, I'll need to focus on. But um, it was a good weekend. I, I had an awesome time. My teammate Mayfield did pretty awesome. Dakota did great. Um, it was a good successful weekend for the guys. Um, good track experience and uh, another awesome event from uh, the Racer Entertainment crew. Alright, well talk to us. we got one more e-buggy race. You can kind of lay it on the line here and uh, go, go all out. It's going to be tough for anybody to probably beat the time from the first round just because the track probably isn't as fast, I would have to imagine. But stranger things have happened. But uh, talk to us about maybe getting a win there and, and uh, maybe tying for overall. Yeah, I think... Um, it's gonna be a crazy last race because everyone's just kind of over it. But uh, I, I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm in it to finish a good run and I get on the podium to end the weekend. Um, car's been working good, so looking forward to it. I'm excited.
Joe Rose has a lot of good finishes out there over the years, but a top three here, and maybe, just maybe, he is now hanging on to the number five spot for the point. Let's go top side now. Rose back to the number two. buggy race a main number two finished uh, but the big race was the pro buggy nitro a main 30 minute race uh, the track was uh, pretty brutal out there and uh, you handled it well and they kind of had the right pace between speed and consistency and uh, talk to us about that the big win really yeah the car was good uh, we like I talked about uh, before I kind of made a slight tire adjustment and uh, went out there and the truck or the car was awesome had a lot of grip through all the dust and still carried a lot of speed through the, the clean high speed areas. So, yeah, just got a decent start and uh, made, I think, one mistake. Spencer led for a lap and I got back by him on the straightaway and then just put my head down and put in clean laps. And I don't think I really had any mistakes for the rest of the race. So, the car engine package and the tire package was on point for this crazy track and it was nice to just get a solid win there. And yeah, I was able to win e-buggy as well off my first round time. The second round did not go so well. Just could not pick the right line. Just kind of made some mistakes, a lot of mistakes. Uh, but I was able to still win with the best time from round one. So yeah, good weekend. Uh, the truck got away from me, but I got the next two. So solid weekend. Thanks to all my companies. Uh, thanks to J Concepts for bringing a, a ton of tire selection. We ran through a lot of tires. and ultimately found the, the perfect tire combo for this this track so yeah clean this stuff up pack up go home get ready for the next one all right man congratulations again and uh thanks for the support and uh we'll see you at the next race and uh yeah fantastic run there in the pro buggy race and uh we'll see you at the next one sounds good all right dakota we had to go and try to get a little bit of silence here uh great weekend overall took a truggy win uh, that was a fantastic run, of course, uh, uh, kind of battling with Ryan at the beginning. We talked about that. Uh, we got into Nitro Buggy, had a good a good run there. Uh, just a, some mistakes here and there, but uh, finished third. It was a great run. And then the last E-Buggy race, uh, you really laid it down in that race. Unfortunately, the track wasn't quite fast enough. Um, you were going for it, trying to get that time. I think you kind of knew what was going on, and you, you pushed it a little bit. But uh, talk to us about your... Uh, Last couple runs. Yeah, last last uh, last main three buggy was really well. I uh, was able to get out front and uh, just felt really comfortable. Probably the most comfortable I felt all week long with the buggies and uh, car was working awesome. And I uh, just went out there and did all that I could. The track was a lot rougher, a lot slower, and uh, just you know just did what I could. Was able to uh, get second overall and uh, you know overall a, a solid weekend and I'm happy with the results. Yeah, so you got a one three, a one two, and a three. Uh, so I mean. You can't really knock that finish. That's amazing. Uh, you started off, you know, getting some twos and qualifying, then you moved right in, and you kind of were uh, gaining speed, and it almost seems like you got quicker as the, um, the weekend went on. Yeah, definitely, like, practice in the beginning, being in qualifying and stuff was struggling a little bit, and uh, the whole team was working together awesome, but we just uh, keep on working on everything, trying different things, and uh, got the cars really good for the mains, and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy, and uh, we'll just uh, keep plugging away and keep working on, on the program and getting better. All right, well, congratulations again. Thanks for the support. Uh, you're so fast. Awesome out there, as usual, and uh, we'll see you at the next race, and uh, thanks again. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. All right, Spencer, the sun is down here. We got the, the racing complete here at the Southern Nationals. Uh, we've been following you all weekend. Uh, tough track, uh, 
just deteriorated as the weekend went on, made it more difficult. But you had some uh, highs, a couple lows this weekend, but uh, the, the Nitro buggy uh, qualifying second, you definitely, we talked about it earlier, you got the car working pretty well. And uh, talk to us about your finish uh, of the overall here in the weekend. Yeah, overall the weekend w was, wasn't that great, but we got things really turning turning around during the end of qualifying, which is awesome motivate you know motivation and some just momentum going in for the mains. The track obviously evolved a ton, and um, there's a lot of stuff that I think I can do better at as a driver, and um, just need to focus a little bit better on the line selection and stuff like that. But um, I told the guys when I caught the driver said I'm like, you know, that was probably the best that my car's ever been on a track like this, like the Silver States, the Dirt Natural Challenge, and now the Southern Nationals. So um, there was definitely some positive to take out of, out of this, even though that my results really weren't much of a, of a, of a voice. But um, it's just kind of part of the gig. Everyone has those highs and lows, and I feel like I was, you know, making the most of what I was, what I was given. And um, I, I think I left a couple of spots on the, off, out on the line. But um, overall, I thought it was a good weekend. So uh, talk to us about what your next race is, what you're looking forward to coming up, and uh, what do we got to watch out for? Yeah, I think my next event is actually going to be the um, Masters of Dirt in um, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. So that'd be a 10 car race. I actually, these next few weeks, I actually, there's no events, but I'm going to be going to the track hobby action and doing some race car run. We have a, a backyard race that we're going to go race out with me, Mayfield, Tanner Denny, and Tanner Steve. So it should be kind of cool just to kind of um, kick it and have some fun and see the, the local guys in Arizona, which is uh, two weeks from now. So um, kind of regroup, go back to the, the shop and kind of get with our engineers and our management staff and kind of just, you know, focus on what we need. and. Um, you know, have a good time at the races and do the best we possibly can. All right, well, thanks again. Thanks for the support. Uh, thanks for all the hard work out there. I know you're thrashing all weekend, <laughs> you and you and Coach, and, uh, you know, everybody, your dad, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you at the next race. Yeah, thank you.